Hello and welcome. This winter I was going to rebuild my old 1994 LL Bean Approach rigid mountain bike, but I ran into a problem. Briefly, the drive side cup is toast on the bottom bracket. So I went out on Facebook Marketplace and I found this bike, a 1999 Specialized Hard Rock. And although it's spent more than a little time outdoors, and it's had its fair share of bumps and bangs and scratches, it's still in pretty darn good shape and well worth fixing up. So, that's what I'm going to do, beginning with disassembly. One of the things which I enjoy about working on bikes, whether it's an old bike like this or a brand new one, is that at the heart of it all, it's fairly easy, and because I like to tinker with things, a trait which I picked up from my late father, I find the process therapeutic. <laughs> Alright, I, I like getting my hands dirty with machines. There, I said it. The thing about this bike is it is of a sufficiently old vintage that it's really quite easy to work on. It's got a straightforward 3x7 uh, drivetrain, and that's about as basic as it gets for mountain bikes back then. And these things have been around a sufficiently long time that there's really no hidden secrets. Anything I needed to learn how to do to work on bikes, any bikes, I've learned through reading, and more, more relevantly, from watching all kinds of YouTube videos. As I said, I enjoy this sort of thing. It brings me pleasure to take something apart, clean it up, and then put it back together. It's even better when it works afterwards, you know? <laughs> Another thing about this bike is I only paid $65 for it. So if I mess it up, I'm not going to feel all that bad. Well, a little bad, but not that bad. And here's the final disassembled product. You got a frame, a couple of wheels, and a box full of miscellaneous parts. And, you know, somehow th this seems to be somewhat less impressive than it is when it's a fully assembled bike. But gee, you take all these little bits and bobs you put them back together, and you got something special. The frame cleaned up quite nicely with a little bit of simple green and a microfiber cloth. The seat post cleaned up with some penetrating oil for lubricant and some fine grit sandpaper. And uh, yeah, that took care of that corrosion pretty nicely. I'm using a leftover Olivio crank set from an older bike that I had. The best part of this is that it's modular, so I can convert it from three chain rings to one simply by taking it apart and installing a 30 tooth narrow wide Fomtor brand chain ring. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The old STX derailleur cleaned up pretty nicely, especially after I scraped 20 some odd years of grease and dirt off the jockey wheels and all the metal bits shined up really well. It looks as good now as it probably did when it was new. I haven't really decided what to do about the paint yet, but in the short term I'm going to protect it with some turtle wax, scratch remover and polish, which actually did a surprisingly good job. The rolling stock now consists of a set of Schwabe Blackjack 26 by 2.2 inch tires with a fairly aggressive tread on a set of Ritchie Vantage double wall aluminum wheels that I've had for quite some time. And in fact, these were on the approach. I cleaned up the braking surfaces with a green Scotch-Brite and the rest of the rims I polished out with good old fashioned 4 aught steel wool. And I think they came out pretty nice. The cassette was originally an 11 to 28 tooth uh, 7 speed. It's now a 12 to 34 tooth 
seven speed from an eight speed cassette that I had laying around. I would have put the eighth one on, but the hub only takes seven gears. There's an old saying that assembly is a reverse of disassembly. Yeah, that's true, but that does not convey the sense of accomplishment that I feel when I start reassembling a bike that I've torn apart. I felt that same sense of satisfaction back in the old days when I used to tinker around on old automobiles. Although I will say, the bikes are much cheaper. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's satisfying, I guess, to work with your hands and to see something that you have taken an interest in come to fruition. And that's what I like about these old bikes. They're just so cool when they're reassembled and back in use. And there's just something that's really cool about taking an old piece of junk, although this one was better than junk, but some of the ones I've worked on, well, where was I? Oh yeah, waxing philosophical. <laughs> I just, I just love putting these things back together and seeing them work. And in many instances, I've done this with bikes that went on to become gifts to people who had no transportation. And I do that through my church. And that's just a great sense of satisfaction to think that something which is a hobby for me is helping to improve somebody else's life. On a less serious note, I am really digging the looks of this reproduction Sella Italia Turbo Saddle. This saddle was a big deal back in the 80s, and I know this bike is from the 90s, but it still gives it that old school look, which I think really sets it off. The last thing that I need to check is the shifting. I think I'll get it dialed in pretty close, but let's have a look. Recapping the upgrades and the updates, there's the reproduction Sella Italia Turbo Saddle, which, like I said earlier, looks really, really good on this bike. The original Shimano STX derailleur cleaned up well and works perfectly. The crank set consists of an old Olivio crank, a Fomtor 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring, and Fuker pedals. The stem is a 90 millimeter wake with a 17 degree rise. On the handlebar, we've got a Shimano Altus seven speed trigger shifter. I've had that forever and I honestly do not recall what it came from, but this was a good chance to use it. And here's a good look at the handlebar from the front. This was the factory original on the Diamondback Response, which I mentioned earlier. It cleaned up well with a coat of flat black. Still using the stock brake levers, why not? The brakes front and rear are now wake linear poles and they all match which makes me happy. I think I'm going to hold on to this bike. I really like it. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. It looks great from 10 feet away. <laughs> um, I'm still on the fence about what to do with the paint, as I said earlier. Uh, on the one hand, I would like to have it look brand new. There's a certain something about that. On the other hand, as they say in the collectible automobile circles, it's only original once. Now, patina is nice and all that. But you could also make a legitimate argument that with all the mechanical changes I've made to this bike, it's not original anymore. So that would only apply very narrowly to the paint. I have plenty of time to decide on what I'm going to do with it, and I honestly have not yet made up my mind. 
You know, at the risk of repeating myself, there's just something that's wonderful about taking an old bicycle and giving it a new life. It's, it's almost magical in some aspects. At least it feels that way subjectively. It's almost like a rebirth. And I, I just get such enjoyment from doing this. And some of my friends are like, well, how many bikes do you have and how many do you need? I always drop back to the N plus one answer, but really, it's about the bike that I'm working on now. And I'll worry about the next bike then. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Below left is a link to a playlist for this bike. Below right is the link I mentioned earlier for the Diamondback Response rebuild, which was also a really fun project and ended up with a really fun bike. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate that when you do. Goodbye and have a great day.